new peaks. Not, not new, new peak. Not new new speaks. New peaks. Should we give it a go? Hmm. Cool. Yes, please. Okay. Ready? Um, yeah. Diego Garcia, it was Diego Garcia. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I can do that. Yeah. Right. Hi there, this is episode one of News Peaks and I'm Tabby Taylor. I'm Colin Naylor. I'm James Dopley. And I'm Natalia Minnie. Today we're going to talk about Diego Garcia. Before we start, we're going to see a quick clip of what the general public think when they hear the name Diego Garcia. Who is Diego <laughs> Garcia? Is he a footballer or something? Fashion? I don't know. Yeah, I know Diego Garcia, yes. Well, I don't know him, but I heard of him. Is he an artist? Who is Diego Garcia? Is he a painter? Diego Garcia. Islands in the Indian Ocean. I think understanding and knowing about Diego Garcia is important because it is so little known. It's a, an example of a historic and ongoing injustice where big powers, the United States and, and Britain, have uh, trampled over the, the human rights of a small group of people. And it's an outrage that uh, that the governments, uh, the way the governments treated the Chicosians, and that they have continually covered it up and lied and misled people. It's actually part of Britain. It's actually part of the British Indian Ocean Territory. And it's an island, or specifically an atoll, in the Indian Ocean, part of something called the Chagos Archipelago, which is a group of islands in the Indian Ocean. 2,000 people, known as the Chagosians, lived on these islands until the last of them were evicted from their homeland by British authorities in 1973. And when were they brought there? Um, they were there, there from like when the slaves were there. Effectively, they used to work there as um, on the coconut plantations. So in the 1960s, what was Diego Garcia like? Was it like a nice place to be? Before, <laughs> well, you know? I mean, it, it's got like names as like Paradise Island, that sort of thing. How many people were living there? 1,800 ish. It was quite small societies. There were lots of villages on these islands. Um, they were. They had their own ruling system. But that was all yeah. destroyed. Britain was that supposed to give back the Chagos Islands, uh, back to Mauritius, but they didn't. We did a deal with Mauritius in order to, if so that we would keep Diego Garcia and the Chagosian Islands in particular, became something called the British East Indi Indian Ocean Territory, yeah. and uh, they would get the independence and some amount of money. The British Indian Ocean Territory Administration was formed in 1965. A, when the, it was the, uh, decided that uh, these islands would be used in future for uh, defence purposes. Why did Britain want to have Diego Garcia? They wanted well, it because the US wanted it. Because of its, but did they know that before, that they, before they decided to take it? Yeah. The US visited uh, Diego Garcia on several uh, occasions in the past and certainly a decision was made in 1969 uh, to remove the population and to establish the military base. Why did the U.S. choose Diego Garcia? They were looking for isolated, strategically located islands in the late 1950s and early 1960s from which they might be able to maintain uh, global power and control. Um, and specifically, they were looking for islands that had small populations that they could simply remove and, and uh, within the hopes that no one would notice and no one would object. And, and sadly, they were able to, to carry it out with Diego Garcia in the sense of hiding the expulsion from much of the world for at least a good number of years. Whether you agree with the military base or not, all around the world, local communities live next to military bases and there's no problem. And so I think that being evicted from the islands was a big mistake. And the other really uh, appalling thing is that it was made by what's called an order in council, which is a bit of an archaic method used by successive governments uh, to um, introduce a policy uh, where there is just executive responsibility for that policy. And the government used this as a back channel to create the British Indian Ocean Territory without any sort of oversight, without any sort of scrutiny. It's a way of slipping underneath the... Um, Radar. Yeah, basically. And without the permission of anybody, without a vote, without anything. Like, they're just allowed to do it. Constitutionally, it's, it's legal uh, to have an order in council, but I think morally, in this case, this should have been debated by uh, Parliament. Had it 
had that scrutiny, uh, I don't think we would have seen the eviction of the islanders in the later 60s. So what were they after um, then when they were searching for the island? They were after the, the sort of equipment they have, the long-range the long bombers specifically. It means that it projects American air power into the, into the Indian Ocean, which means they can reach Middle the East. Middle East, oh, yeah. Africa, Asia. Uh, Southeast Asia. Asia. Asia in particular, India. They've sort of got the perfect spot to, to attack yeah. everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It certainly had to do with the uh, Cold War. And uh, the Cold War has ended, but still they are using the place to, uh, a, as you've seen, a military um, strikes in um, Iraq and certainly in other areas in the past. It's certainly among the most important because it is so uh, strategically located and because of its isolation and the fact that no one can go there, it, it lets the U.S. military and other parts of the U.S. government do what it what it wants. Um, so it's among the biggest and most important bases in the world. David Vine's um, Island of Shame kind of goes into how um, America sort of expanded over after the war, the Second World War, and how they've kind of um, attempted to keep power in certain parts of the world. Um, and he kind of puts across this theory that America attempted to be um, an empire of bases. Well, they got there some in Britain, Black and Ethan, yeah. they've got one in Okinawa. They've yeah, got, you uh, can see a map of like where they are. And the deal that was cut was slightly cleaner than America just going in and taking, obviously, because obviously it, we, were one of, we are one of America's closest allies and immediately in that period of decolonization, America saw so many opportunities to expand its tendrils all across the world. Yeah. Yeah. What did like, Britain get from, the, from this like, bargain? <laughs> you got a $14 million discount. Um, the Polaris project? What's the Polaris? That's their nu nuclear agreed. project, effectively. We use Trident at the moment, but before that, yeah. Yeah. we were using an American missile system. And that's what they so received, they the $14 million discount. discount off. Yeah. And so in exchange for that, we gave them... Uh, the we gave them uh, could, yeah, we gave them so the lease, years, the 50-year yeah. lease, on with the option of another 20 years. Did they so take the 20 years? They ha Well, actually, um, now you mention it, we're... <laughs> yeah. The negotiations for America extending their use of the ERC for another 20 years will begin in 2015, as the original agreement expires in 2016. So in the simplest possible terms, you've got us trading an island for a $14 million discount on nuclear arms. Yes. It's kind of shocking that they're putting that kind of just price tag on, on, on the, you know, they, 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 yeah, they've clearly kind of you, ratioed you're worth out. You're 14 million yeah. pounds in missiles. I think many people care because they recognise that uh, this terrible injustice was done to this people. And no one defends what the U.S. and British governments did in expelling the Chagossians. Uh, even the British and, and U.S. governments don't defend what they did in the 60s and early 1970s. So I think it, it's uh, a story that, that people gravitate to very quickly. In a memo to the US from a British diplomat, it read, <clears throat> the objective of the exercise is to get some rocks which will remain ours. There will be no indigenous population except seagulls. Unfortunately, along with the seagulls go some for you Tarzans and Man Fridays that are hopefully being wished on Mauritius. Oh, God. Awful. That's horrible. Yeah. I can't believe that's actually written down. As somebody actually sent that. No, it's a good example of like classic imperial kind of philosophy that they're 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 sort of uh, you know the third world is full of Tarzans and Man Fridays and that the and I think that's that's almost a, a, an interesting reason as to why they thought it was an acceptable thing to do. Supremacism. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How did they how did they get rid of them? I, it was quite a long process because they didn't want it to be like an obvious thing, I suppose. They started like when people, family were going to Mauritius or Seychelles for holiday, they stop you from coming back. When you go to the office to get your ticket to board the ship to go back, they were being told that you can't go back. People started to stop getting food. There's no more food. They send away the doctors, the nurses, uh, they close the shop and uh, People started to think what's going on. So effectively, it is coercion. You're, you're yeah, taking away coercion. the ability to live on this island. If that's not coercion, then co yeah, coercion what must is have been coercion? awful. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, it got like it did get worse after that. So in 1971, they did something pretty astonishing. Wanting to empty the island completely, they killed a thousand of the Chagosian pets, mostly dogs. They started uh, paying people to kill the dogs poison the dogs and you are standing there with your parent hearing your pets being gas and dead how do you 
think a child feel. And after hearing that and saying that, the parents said, okay, they are doing that to our dogs. Soon they will do with our kids. We better go because they were refusing to go. Even without food, without uh, help from uh, the doctors and nurses. When after the gassing of the dog, they were scared for the life of their kids. So by 1973, they'd gotten rid of, they'd take the, they took the last ship away from the island. Oh, yeah. You're allowed to take one suitcase on your on the ship because they they were just using like this like terrible ship which was meant to sail from Mauritius to the Seychelles. Effectively. Yeah. From what I've read about it, it sounded like uh, the the ultimate irony is it sounded so much like a slaving ship, like the, yeah, the conditions yeah. that they were kept in. Like. Yeah, like women and children slept on like crates going over. They were put in a prison when they got to the Seychelles. Yeah. The manager will tell you, okay, tomorrow you're going to board the ship with your family. Uh, the father and five child will go on a, a ship. The mother and the other four child will go on another ship. In the midway at sea, you, the, the captain being told that, okay, this ship is going to Mauritius and the other one is going to Seychelles. And we, these people have never been able to get in touch with their sibling or parent until some of the parents are dead already. A family was split up, your belongings stay behind. You have only the few clothes that you have, you brought with you to Seychelles or Mauritius. And in the 65, 68, people were being told that Diego Gracia had been sold. So you can't go back. There's plenty more that we don't know about because no one can go there unless they're in the U.S. or British military. Uh, journalists haven't been able to go, human rights investigators haven't been able to go, and most importantly, the Chagossians have been barred from going back to their homeland. It's like if all of our, all of the problems with our society and our government and all that, you can you can look at you can take it like a petri dish. You can look at Diego Garcia and mm -hmm. see all the things that the lack of democracy, the lack of human rights, lack of consideration for other cultures, minorities. Yeah, the whole Western imperialist outlook, neo imperialism. The whole like the the, the supremacy, the it's Western there, supremacy, it's, it's everything you can see in that in this particular case, this tiny tiny little island.